Hey y'all, welcome to fifth grade, chapter eight, lesson three. We're gonna go ahead and get started with number two. So it says that 10 boys share seven cereal bars equally. Well, obviously there's more boys than there are cereal bars, so they want us to do that, okay? So we have uh, seven is not bigger than 10, which means we're just going to have a fraction of seven tenths. That's it, guys. That that's that easy, okay? We can't reduce it. Seven is prime and doesn't go into ten, so we can't do anything with that, okay? So because seven is smaller than ten and we can't reduce it, that's the answer, okay? Now on this one, twelve is bigger than eight, okay? If you want to take the time to read the story, you can, but this is the problem within the story, okay? So it gives us twelve divided by eight. Well, I'm gonna put that like this just so that you guys can see um how it is i'm getting my answer and then we're going to do it mentally okay so eight is going to go into 12 one time one times eight is eight subtract and get four okay so now i'm going to show you how i'm going to get my numbers okay so one is my whole number okay four is my top number okay and eight is my bottom number, okay? Now four eighths is equal to one half, so it's gonna be one and a half, okay? Okay? Not so bad once you get used to it, okay? I'm gonna show you another way to think about this in just a second, okay? So this one, eight divided by three, okay? That's the same thing as saying eight over three. Okay, so yes, you can do exactly what we just did and divide it. You absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to show you another way really fast to do it mentally. Okay, so mentally, I know that three goes into eight two times. Two times three is six. Eight minus six is two. And my denominator stays the same. Okay, now all I did was to put the top number in the box. Three goes into eight twice. Two times three is six. Subtract, and I get two. And my denominator stays the same. Okay, that's all I did. Okay, but you can do it mentally, okay? Okay, and try it again. Oh, except this one, this number is smaller than the second number. So when the first number is smaller than the second number, just a fraction, guys. Okay, now this would be six over nine, but that can be reduced. Okay, three goes into both of those. So three goes into six twice, and three goes into nine three times. So your answer is two thirds. Okay. Okay, again, three goes into 12. Well, three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times, so your fraction is going to be one-fourth. Okay, let me show you how and why I just did that because I know that a whole bunch of you are going, how did you just cross that out without doing a fraction? So I'm going to show you, okay? We have three divided by 12, okay? Same thing as saying three divided by 12. It's exactly the same, doing a fraction, okay? So three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times. That's all I did. I just did it when it was here instead of when it was a fraction, okay? It's the same exact thing, guys. Okay, so this, one, this number is bigger than the second number, so I know that three goes into five one time, one times three is three, five minus three is two, and my denominator would be three. Okay? Not that bad, I swear. Okay. There are 12 students in a jewelry making class and eight sets of charms. What fraction of the set of charms will each student get? So we have eight sets of charms, but we have 12 students. So it's going to be 
8 divided by 12, okay? Now, I can rewrite that as 8 over 12, and then I can reduce it, okay? Or I can sit here when it's like this, and I can go 4 goes into 8 twice, and 4 goes into 12 three times, which makes it 2 thirds, okay? Two thirds of a set. I don't want to write a set of charms, it just takes too long. So there we go. Okay. Now, that's all I did though. If it was like this, I would do exactly the same thing. Four goes into eight twice, four goes into eight, uh, sorry, 12 three times. It's exactly the same. I just did it here instead. Okay. All right. Five friends share six fruit snacks. Okay, so they have six fruit snacks and five friends are sharing them. Okay, so it's going to be six divided by five. Okay, well, five goes into six one time. One times five is five and six minus five is one. And my denominator would be five. Second number is your denominator. Okay. So one and one fifth packs, whatever it is, okay? Or fruit snacks, sorry. Not a whole pack of fruit snacks, just a fruit snack. So fruit snacks. All right, okay? All right, so we're gonna go on to the back. You guys are gonna do a lesson check. I'm sorry to do the whole front side with you guys. Okay, and we're going to go down and do this final review. Okay, it says Arturo has a log that is four yards long. He cuts the log into pieces that are one third yard long. How many pieces will Arturo have? So we have four divided by one third. Now, four is not a fraction. I'm going to put it over one. Okay, so we are going to keep, change, and flip for. 12, 12 pieces, okay? I know I'm making this look easy because I've had so many years of experience, but really it is that easy, okay? You guys will get it, be patient, okay? Who has two pieces that he cuts into six? How many one six size pieces does he have? So he has two pieces. He is dividing them, cutting them into one six pieces. Two is not a fraction, I will put it over a one, okay? I'm going to keep, change, and flip for 12, 12 pieces again. Okay. Kayaks rent for $35 a day. Write an expression using a distributive property that can help find the cost in dollars of renting three kayaks for a day. Well, that would just be three times 35, okay? Three doesn't go into 35 evenly, so I don't know how they want you to use the distributive property, but that's what that is, okay? Three kayaks, $35 for each one a day. That's it, guys, okay? Oh, I do know how they want you to use it. So all they want you to do is go three times 30, plus three times five, my bad, okay? All right, all right, Louisa is 152.7 centimeters tall. Her younger sister is 8.42 centimeters shorter than she is. How tall is Louisa's younger sister? So we're gonna take how tall Louisa is. We're gonna subtract how tall, or what the difference is. And notice that I lined up those decimals. I don't have a number here to take two away from, so I'm gonna put a zero because it's after the decimal point, okay? Don't freak out when they don't line up. All right, so now the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my decimal. Absolute first thing I do every time I'm working with adding or subtracting decimals is to drop my decimal, okay? Zero cannot take away two, so I'm gonna make this a six, making that a 10. 10 take away two is eight. Six 
minus 4 is 2. 2 cannot take away 8, so I'm going to make that a 4, making this 12. And 12 minus 8 is 4. I'm going to bring down my 4 and my 1. Okay, so she is 144.28 centimeters. Okay, all right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. For 8.3, come on back for 8.4. See you soon.